Hey guys, you tune in with Matters of the Heart with your girl Lexi, where we talk about financial literacy, we talk about relationships, everything that plagues the heart, how we have affirmations to help us into our destiny. And um, all new, she's back, she's in the building. We getting back started with a new episode with Matters of the Heart. And so what other way to top it off with a crusty on the series, Ebonize Me, and I can't wait to dive in. Thank you, Jeff, for um, this opportunity. Coming on Matters of the Heart with your girl, Lexi, I appreciate it. Um, so tell my audience about what you do and why you chose acting from comedy, because I do know you do comedy. Um, a lot of people who tune into my show are always looking at new ways to revamp themselves and um, change their mindset to get into new revenues or streams of income. So tell us about yourself. Sure thing. Um, first of all, thank you for the opportunity. This is amazing. Um, my you. name is Jeffrey Baylock. Stage name is Jeff Baylock. Really don't make a difference. <laughs> uh, I am a comedian I, actor from Roseland, Illinois. Um, I've been doing the style of comedy for eight years. I've been acting for about five maybe six years mm -hmm. yeah 20 26 no 2014 yeah 2014 so that's about six years okay. look, look i can't count <laughs> look, um okay you just a pro at it that's all when you in business for a minute right. it just come no, I still, no to tell you the truth i still count on my hands it could be like uh, it could be like uh what's seven plus three hold on <laughs> Listen, we all do it. Look, I do taxes too, so sometimes I'm like that, like, uh, I'm gonna get this deduction. <laughs> no, I'm worse. I get to the point where I have a whole calculator in front of me and I still count on my hands. It's sad. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> hey, as long as you get to the end result and goal, that's all that matters. Like you get into with this acting or ever not. That's important. Um, so with acting. <laughs> Yes, so with acting, I guess I got dared to, to act. Because <laughs> I was always, I got to the point where. I would get dared to act, like, how do you. Right. Like, cracking jokes at the table and me playing different types of characters, you know, friends always say, man, you need to go act. And it got to the point where I met up with a guy from a show that I was doing by the name of James Gordon. Shout out to James Gordon. He was like, man, Joe, you should try acting. And I was like, uh, I don't know about all of that. So he was like, well. Explain that I'm dominating right here. <laughs> well, he introduced me to some people uh, with Four Star Casting. He was shout out to Four Star Casting. Um, and they was like, you know, we're looking for people for Empire. And I did pretty much season one and season two. But my first debut kickoff of acting was actually a stand-in role. I was a stand-in for Terrence Howard. That was that was pretty interesting. Yeah. So not only am I doing this, but now I'm meeting celebrities. And wow, whew, you ever fainted? <laughs> you ever wanted to faint? Like, oh my God, that's the dude that son whooped that trick. <laughs> <laughs> so from there, um. Empire pretty much took off for me. I started learning the business, mm -hmm. um, how to be part of a cast, time, lighting, and all the other stuff. And then it got to the point where people in Chicago do a lot of independent films. And I just started hopping in like, man, you know, y'all got any roles, y'all extras, what, what y'all need, what y'all need? And it got to the point where my face was what people was looking for. And I went from background to now doing lead roles nowadays. So, hey, yeah. <laughs> well, he did. So, as, as, as is the look, it's all about that look. <laughs> That's awesome. So, what advice would you give people who's trying to um, break into the industry? Like you said, it's important to know the business. So, what were some of the things that you had to do to prepare? Sure thing. So, Definitely got to learn how to do a monologue. At least have two to three monologues in your back pocket, memorize. And a monologue for people that don't know monologue, you know, you could be you pick something from your favorite movie because everybody watches movies and they have their favorite line. And you can do that line. You can act it out, practice it in the mirror. And um, when you go online, you know, look for 
anything, any um, cast nature that's looking for background actors or extras and stuff like that, that's how you get in. And when you do get in, you know, make sure you be that best background actor on the planet. Because it gets to the point where a director would be like, you, you over there, come here. Let me. Let me. Guys, don't. Yeah, you know what? You know, like you may think something um, small, small beginnings can lead to great. Ain't nothing wrong. Ain't nothing wrong with starting off small, um, because even Taraji P Henson says uh, before she started getting major roles, she was a background somewhere. Yeah. So I want to give a shout out to my girl, Shantae Gibson, who actually got to interview her when she started her career. Huge shout out to, oh, huge shout out to her. Oh, my God. Uh, Queen G Live Experience. Thank you, sis. Um, appreciate you. <laughs> when I, met her, I, I promise you, I, I nearly fainted. Ugh, oh, Jesus. Because she's doing so much dope stuff. Like, I, I love her so much, man the team with Smile World TV Network as well as Matters of the Heart. It's good to have a great ecosystem around you and sisterhood that you can build on. So that's important. It's kind of like important in the acting arena, like somebody that knows somebody, like you said, that helps you guys do um, yes. acting and you guys can like pull for each other and root for each other. So I think that's exactly. So tell me, how did you um, land on Ebonize Me, an upcoming web series um, that will be coming 2021 on the summer of 2021? And on my network, Smile TV Network on Roku. So, hey, oh, guys. It's, it's going to be hot. First of all, this, this is an exciting opportunity for me. Um, this is pretty much my fourth lead role. Um, I'm very excited. And how I came across it, uh, it was actually a recasting situation. So Ebony had a person that played Leo, which was her, which is her fiance for the people that don't know, um, in the Ebonize Me project. She had a person, but for some odd reason, um, it didn't go as planned. Ebony decided to go in another direction. And shout out to um, Fad, who plays Rebecca in the series. Um, when Ebony was recast, she was like, you know, I need somebody. Um, who, who do you have? And Fad thought about me. And uh, Ebony reached out to me. We had a one on one conversation. Um, I asked her everything that I need to know about this character. And with the Ebonize Me, it's actually about her real life. So uh -huh. it was, this is a very serious project. So I, I asked her specifically, like, okay, so since this is about your real ex fiance, Tell me all about him. I want to be the best ex-fiance on the planet, which he's pretty much of a douchebag in the series, but, you know, you, you'll see it. You, y'all see it pretty soon. Y'all see it pretty soon. It's a juicy role. I think she's a great up-and-coming um, director. Um, her writing skills are impeccable. Um, I can see the growth um, in her brand and how she's doing great things with her label as well to um, correlate. Um, it's always good to get our stories out there and told. Um, sometimes they're lost in the sauce, but um, you guys should definitely be on the lookout, support. Uh, if you want to donate, yes, definitely. <laughs> go ahead. If you want to donate? That's me. Please. Go ahead to our page, Ebony, and um, to donate. Yes, to yeah. keep the project going and to get to the masses because it's going to encourage you guys. It's going to motivate you, and you guys will see. Oh, yeah from the hard work up, how to build, how to get yourself out there in your brand. So, yeah. Um, so what has this character kind of brought to your life in real life? Like sometimes I know actors say it's hard for them to take off the character that they possess uh, when they're going for a role, but sometimes um, each character is a little bit of themselves or leave a um, the sounding remark on how they carry out or do their daily life or impress them. So how has this character shaped you in any way? So first of all, when um when I found out how I was gonna play this character with Leo, um, Leo is the perfect example of men mess up, but men gotta clean up their mess. Um, Leo did a whole bunch of bad things and he has to pretty much, you know, kiss a little booty to try to get his woman back. 
Because at the end of the day, um, in real life, if you're in a relationship and you mess up, you have a huge chance of losing that person. And if you really love that person, you would do everything in your power to fix that and to try to get things going. Yeah, the trust is going to be gone, but if you really truly want this to work, you have to build and you got to realize time, patience, and a lot of booty kissing. So Leo <laughs> definitely, I mean, it, it got me reminded because it was in a, it was a past time where, you know, I messed up and the process of fixing it was long and hard, but it worked out in the end. So yeah, there's a lot of lessons to be learned. So do you think, um, since we're kind of like on the shift of relationships and out of the hearts, you talk about that and reflect on that. Um, so we can be better versions of ourselves in relationships, how we interact in business, every aspect of our heart. Um, do you think that sometimes too far is too far, like of no return or repair? Like sometimes we can say, oh, I'm sorry, do the butt kissing. But sometimes some things are, you know, damaged and can't be mended. Well, you know, it depends on the situation, um, but it all starts with if you and your partner are equally yoked, if y'all are compatible. Yeah. Um, because sometimes in relationships, people just hop into it and they don't really know each other. They don't. They say they want to try to get to know each other, but they don't do anything in the beginning. They right. do what is called the the honeymoon phase, you know, in the beginning, and it, it looks good on paper, but. I'm the type of person, if I get into a serious relationship, I'm going to let her know as much information that she needs to know so she can have a decision if she want to deal with me or not. So once you set that again and everything is on the table, then y'all can build off each other. So, yeah. Yeah, I think it's... Easier said than done. Yeah, true. I think it's good to have that conversation. Like my of attraction is... Whew, <laughs> Something else. Curiosity <laughs> always kills the cat. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, I think that in relationships you should build. Like a lot of um young ladies don't think that they should have anything to the table that a man should just take care of them. But um I think it goes both ways and I think you should have something to build with something and not just, you know, think one sided. We always say, Oh, don't try to control me, don't do this, but in some ways we're you know, we're fascists ourselves, right. but then we want the other worlds reversed. But I think you should have building blocks in any key relationship and your character go through so many turns, which I think makes a great um oh, man for a series so it's it's awesome you guys gotta tune in i'm telling you leo, ready. leo took so leo so many leo took so many l's like me as a person that's acting this character I have to figure out how i'm going to turn it around it's not going to be easy but <laughs> when there's a will there's a way <laughs> yes so is there any upcoming projects for you in store for you that we should be looking at that's besides Ebonize Me, which is a great project? I know you guys are still filming for that, but is there any other um, upcoming mm -hmm. projects or projects that you wish that you could um, be on? Well, um, at the moment, there's a lot of things going on. Um, <laughs> I want to give a shout out to Rich Comedy Club. The reason why I say that is this past Sunday, I had did a showcase there. We sold that show out. Yeah. Um, I did a beautiful job. <laughs> yeah, I, I, so that was my first time doing, so I throw shows all through Chicago. Mm -hmm. And for the past three years, I've been throwing, I threw 15 shows and I sold out 10 of them. And this past show was the 10th show. But this was the first show that I threw under my label, which is JB Entertainment, at a comedy club and then sell out that club. So it was a, Huge accomplishment for me. Congratulations. Um, Congratulations. Thank you. That's awesome, King. Um, I salute you. Keep pushing. Hard work. So tell people how they can like find your itinerary, where they can find you when you put on these shows and things like that. Like, where can sure they thing. So, As far as social media goes, um, I'm all over the I'm all over social media under Jeff Baylock. You can actually Google did such a good job. All I just need is that verified wiki and I'm on the map. It's gonna be over with. But you can actually go on Google, type in Jeff Baylock, J-E-F-F-B-A-Y-L-O-C-K, and they'll pop up everything from my website, which is jbentertainment.net, 
uh, from YouTube sites, um, all, all, pretty much all over the place. That's why I usually tell people, at first I'd be like, yeah, you can follow me on Facebook at this and Twitter at that. Just put it all in Google. And Google we trust. <laughs> yes, they will put you, pull you up. Everything that you are doing, you can just find. Um, so that's yeah. awesome. what can people expect when they go to a comedy setting with you as a comic? What can they expect? Well, I call my comedy style the no chill style. And basically, it's observational comedy with a little bit of being too politically correct. So I like, I tend, people always tend to say, um, I like, a, I be a little bit too politically correct. And my jokes get to the point where you'll say things like, I'm gonna pray for this guy. I can't believe he said that. Something wrong with him. You know, so I, I like to tell stories. Like last night I did a, um, a joke. I mean, at the, at the show this past Sunday, I did a joke about how I like uh, BBW, <laughs> but I changed the acronym. I said, where are my beautiful black women at? Mm -hmm. And, you know, people was, clipping. but I was really talking about, you know, for real BBWs, but I, I switched the acronym to set them up. And then I did a joke about what's one reason that I like um, about BBWs. And I mean, I don't know if, I, I don't know if I get explicit or curse or anything. I, I, you know, I got to keep it clean. I got to keep it clean. Be, be your, be <laughs> okay. look, look, I was trying to be nice. You feel me? So I did this joke where one reason why I like BBWs is I like how long it takes for y'all to take off y'all clothes. <laughs> because, cause, you know, you got some BBWs, they have the body briefer, they waist trainer, and all that other stuff. But they'll wear like regular clothes, like a t-shirt and pants. So then I say, I like that, but I know y'all got that armor underneath all those clothes. <laughs> Don't be talking about our armor. <laughs> so yeah, we got but, um, protectors, a lot of stuff. <laughs> exactly. So, and then I crack a joke where I talk about when y'all take it off, and then <laughs> you know your body parts just be on its own and have a mind of its own, and I love it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that that's true for some of my uh <laughs> trying i didn't think it was going to work but they ate up i actually have a clip of that on my facebook um it, it's uh, it's about i think it's like two minutes long and it's really hilarious and then i did a whole act out on how to make love to a bbw it, it, it's so stupid i, I promise you it's, it's insane art in a science <laughs> yes art <laughs> science and technique <laughs> <laughs> yes you are correct I, I can see why people were going to come see you and see why you're sold out got me in stitches I love it I love comedy um, I am so proud of you. salute to you especially the king doing what he needs to do um, being an entrepreneur I wish you nothing but success and abundance um, and I can't wait to see continue great things um, from you. So thank you. It's been a pleasure and an honor for you to come on Matters of Heart with your girl Lexi. So I appreciate that and don't take that lightly. Again, if you can give out Google, right? Google for Zell Playlock. And uh, what's your com company right, you can, for your show? What are your, what's sorry. your... I'm sorry, go ahead, King. My comedy shows is called the No Chill uh, Comedy Shows. That's what they be. <laughs> okay, awesome, guys. You heard it here first. Thank you so much, Jeff, for tuning in with Matters of the Heart. Guys, check out his comedy. Check out Support. Support a fellow king. You guys, um, Ebonize Me Project is coming soon. Summer 2021. Yeah. Hey, let's make it happen. Don't forget to check your girl, Matters matters of the heart page as well as i told you i was coming i'm coming with a vengeance okay the network is up smile world tv network let's go um again remember you're one affirmation away from greatness yes you are thank you <laughs>